here's a topic in probability that's really um, of great importance and tends to be counterintuitive. So it's the problem of false negatives and false positives. Uh, there's a, lots of other terminology for this in probability and statistics. Um, but let's look at a, a very specific case study. Uh, some of these numbers are uh, are real. Some of them are are made up. I'll let you know which ones are made up. So we have a 43-year-old woman who goes in for a preventive uh, screening mammogram, uh, which is a uh, a radiological exam to see uh, if she has breast cancer, and it comes up positive. And the question is, what are the chances that she actually has breast cancer? And the thing is about a, about a screening test is they're not particularly accurate. They tend to be not very invasive and maybe simple and maybe inexpensive, but not necessarily very accurate. So what are the probabilities? Uh, what's the probability that she actually has breast cancer? So let's say the test has a false positive rate of 10%. So what that means that is that among the people who do not have breast cancer, 10% of those will actually get a positive result. And that's a bit on the high side, but for a screening test, that's not unreasonable. Although I did make this number up to be to make it simple. It also has a false negative rate of 25%, let's say. So that means that among the people who do have breast cancer, it's going to miss it 25% of the time. Again, higher than you'd ideally like, but it's supposed to be a cheap and quick screening. So what is the probability that she has breast cancer? Is it 90%? That's just 1 minus the false positive rate. Or is it somehow combining these two numbers? It Maybe it's 90% times 75%, 67.5%. How do you combine these two numbers to get the probability that she has breast cancer? So think about that. You might want to pause the video for a minute and think about what's your estimate of the probability that she has breast cancer. Unfortunately, you, that was really a trick question. Um, you cannot answer that question. We are lacking an absolutely crucial piece of information, which is the background incidence of breast cancer. How many people actually have breast cancer? And this, I actually, this is actually reasonably accurate for a woman in her 40s. It's 1.4 percent. Okay, so how does that affect the final answer? Now we've got these three numbers. We've got the false positive rate, the false negative rate. We've got the background incidence. How does that affect the final answer? She's looking at this positive result, what should be her estimate of the probability that she actually has breast cancer and has to do more invasive procedures, a very worrisome situation. What's the, the actual probability? So again, I would ask you, invite you to make a guess, just a rough guess. What do you think the probability is? Is it, is it still something like, uh, if you would guess like 90% or 60% or something like that, or what is your guess for that? I would really invite you to pause for a second. So. Here's one way to think about this, which is with trees. Uh, we're basically being given this tree worth of information. And let's go through this. There's the possibility that she either has cancer or she doesn't have cancer. And then there's the, what she gets on the test. So these are all the possibilities based on whether somebody has cancer or not, and whether they get a positive or negative test, uh, negative result on the screening test. So the background incidence is the two branches coming out of the root of the tree. That of all the populations, so the root is everybody, all the, the women who could, um, in this big population, say women in their 40s, and only 0.014, 1.4% of those people have cancer. The probability that somebody picked totally at random that doesn't have cancer is 0.986. Now, the false positive and false negative rates are really important that those are conditional probabilities. Given that someone has cancer, there's a 25% chance that they'll actually get a negative result. That was the false negative rate. Therefore, there's a 75% chance that they'll get a positive result. These, remember, always add to 1, just like these, these add to 1. These also add to 1. They are the false positive rate, 10%, or an 0.1 chance that someone with no cancer will get a positive uh, screening test, and 0.9 that someone with no cancer will get a negative screening test. The key to this problem, one of the keys to this problem, is that this is not the tree we really care about. We don't know if this person has cancer. That's what we want to actually know. This is like a godlike perspective, saying, oh, I know that this person has cancer, and I can tell whether the, what the probabilities of the screening test are going to be. What we would like to see is this tree where the thing we first look at is whether the, the test is positive or negative, we know we're looking at a positive test. She knows she's looking at a positive test coming back from the doctor. She would like to know the conditional probability, given that information, 
that she has cancer. She's really, really interested in this mystery number. It's a conditional probability, but it's the probability that she has cancer and is tested positive, given that she tested positive. Unfortunately, what's directly known in this uh, situation is stuff that's conditioning on whether, she, whether somebody has cancer or not. And the problem is she doesn't know that. So it's kind of flipping a tree, if you will, or some people call it turning trees, to switch the direction. And one of the problems there is that the tree is really biased in terms of which way it presents that information. So what I would do is I would go to more, more of a tabular presentation. So let's build a table of all the different possibilities. OK, so here's what you get on the mammogram. There's has cancer versus no cancer. There's test positive versus test negative. OK, and then there's various subtotals. And just to make things really concrete, I'm going to imagine doing this for 1,000 women in their 40s, po total population 1,000. And that often helps to make things really explicit. Okay, the 1,000 is good because I had things that were like 0.01%, things like that. Everything will work out to be an integer. Okay, the first thing I can fill in is simply how many of those people have cancer. If it's a typical population, how many people don't have cancer? Okay, so the 986 and 14. That's the background. So that's what I would say call use the background incidence. Okay, now we can use the, the tests known false positive and negative rates. Of these 14, cancer patients, 75% are going to test positive, and 25% are going to test negative. Of the 986, the vast majority who don't have cancer, 10% of those will test positive, and 90% will test negative. Okay, so now let's actually do that. Okay, um, I rounded things, so it won't come out exact here, but I rounded to the nearest uh, person here. Um, so 11 people uh, have cancer and test positive, three have cancer and test negative, 99 uh, have no cancer and test positive. That's a pretty big number. And the vast majority, of course, don't have cancer and test negative. Okay, so we filled in these and we used the percentages to get these guys. So if you go back to the tree, we're kind of working down the branches of the tree we actually do know. We filled in 14 people here, 986 people here, and then we work down the branches of the tree. So you can think about it in terms of the tree, but I, I think it's better to just kind of go to the tabular presentation and stay with that. Okay, so here's where we are. All right. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and total the columns to, to finish out the table. That's easy. Just add up. Okay, how many people to totally would test positive out of this population? How many people would test negative? That isn't information we were directly given. We really had to do this multiple step procedure to figure out these subtotals. Okay, but that those are very interesting numbers, okay, because what we really care about are the column percentages. We care about conditioning on, say, the test, the positive testers. We, we know we're in this column. She knows that she got a positive test, and she's interested in which of these two boxes she's in, okay. Well, if you know you're a positive tester, let me go back, 11 out of 110, there's only 10% of those positive testers who actually have cancer. The positive testers are dominated by people who are false positives. This is the false positive box. People have no cancer, but tested positive. It's because there's so many people who, have, who don't have cancer, even a relatively small false positive rate is going to swamp things. So in fact, the, po the, the conditional probability that she has cancer given a positive test is this box over this box, and the percentage is actually just 10%. Okay. Um, and you can figure out all the other conditional probabilities we'd want, like to know as well. What's the probability if she had tested negative that she has cancer? That that te fa that false negative rate was 25%. It was disturbingly high. But in fact, the probability that you have cancer given a negative test is still very, very small. It's 0.3%. Um, and so there's there's uh, these numbers tend to be very different from what people usually expect. This 10% is quite a bit smaller than the 90% or 67% or some number, number like that that people would often guess. Okay, uh, one a pictorial version of that is, that's really helpful. This is from a book by um, Nate Silver. That if you picture all these thousand people and then you just kind of randomly put down, um, I'm going to put down women with breast cancer. So that's where the pluses. The pluses are the people who actually have cancer. There's not very many pluses. And then the people who, with breast cancer who are positive, that's that 11 out of 14. That's the pluses in the shaded box. Okay. And then the negative, among breast cancer with negative, you have the 
uh, unshaded but with a plus, and there's very few of those guys. What do you have a lot of? You have a lot of shaded boxes without a plus in them. That is, among all the people who don't have a plus, all the boxes without a plus, that's people who don't have cancer, there is a whole lot of false positives. That's all these guys. So if you know you are in a shaded box, which is what you know if you come back from the doctor with the positive test, and you really want to know whether you're in the, one of the pluses, then you know what? You're more likely to be in one of these many, many shaded boxes without a plus because they dominate the shaded boxes, not the ones where you actually have cancer. Okay.